Praise the Lord and welcome to Friday Night Alive. I'm Bob Fowler and this is my wife, Adis, and we are so privileged and honored and blessed to not only be with you, but be with them on this Friday night. Yes, we are. I'm glad it's Friday. I hope y'all are glad it's Friday because most of our weekends start mm. on Friday. How's your week been? Very you look good. very nice, very by the way. Thank you. You look like you just got your hair done. Thank you. Looks very Mom. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little inside joke. She did just get her hair done. But uh, how's your week been? Very good. Very good. Good, Looking good. Looking forward to this evening. To me, the week has gone by so quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has flown by. So we pray that it's been the same for you. And we just hope if you're watching on the live stream that you remember it's a live program. So we welcome your comments, your questions, your prayer requests, your praise reports, so that we can communicate with you live and also agree with them in prayer. Amen. There's power in agreement. Yes. Amen. If you don't believe it, try it. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a scriptural invitation and command for all of us yes. that if any two of you shall agree as touching any one thing, it'll be done for the whole purpose and reason to glorify the Father. Yes. Yeah, so if you really want to glorify the Father, agree with somebody. So if you have a need or anything you're going through, please just send it in in the comments question, and we'll do our best to keep track with those things. Well, I'm excited about what we're going to talk about. Me too. I, it's, I, I listen to your afternoon program, and it's always so <laughs> funny to me that I never share with you what we're going to talk about tonight or the title until you were done with that afternoon program on Fridays. And it seemed like it always kind of ties in together. And um, it was no different today. When you know you started talking about the Holy Spirit, I just said, Lord, thank you. This is a confirmation that I needed Amen. to go ahead with this topic this evening. Amen, yeah, because whether people really don't, and we do it intentionally, we do not discuss what we're going to talk about Friday night. If you and I are doing the program, we don't discuss it. And one of the reasons is I tell her, if you give me the topic, I might steal it. <laughs> so we usually wait until the afternoon program. So when you told me that today, it really made me feel good because, uh, and, and then there was a struggle. You know, let me, let, let, let both of us give you all a little inside track. If you're going through some problems, you got a breakthrough right in front of you. Mm -hmm. If you're going through some static, it seems like the signal between you and God is a little unclear. You need to be encouraged. Keep your head up. Keep your hope up. Keep your expectation up and your faith up and your confession up because right around the corner on the other side of that, there's going to be a victorious breakthrough for people's lives. Amen. So uh, Amen. I even wrestled with the topic today, should I, shouldn't I? Because it's important to us that yes. what we share and we minister mm -hmm. uh, ministers to you. Mm -hmm. And so we want you to know that. So we're, we're really excited about what we're going to talk about. Tonight. And it's interesting to me every time that you, um, you know, I'll watch uh, uh, um, someone minister um, on a certain day and then the next day go to another ministry and listen and hear the same message uh, and this happened a lot when we were pa we were pastoring. Yep. That we would do our, our Sunday morning service, and then Monday morning I would go into work and just put on some kind of uh, program from a different uh, ministry, and find that the spirit of the Lord seems to be say, trying to say the same thing yes. in different places. Yeah. And that doesn't happen just in the United States; it happens all over the world. All over the world. I was going to say after that Sunday service, and I would just kind of send out all my notes to, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's the same author. Yes. And so when you begin to hear that, mm -hmm. you recognize not only is God saying a word to you, but he's saying a, a word, as you said, to people all over the world. Amen. And it happens, the interesting thing, it not only happens all over the world, it happens in multiple cultures, multiple languages, yes. multiple time zones. I mm -hmm. mean, when you really begin to think about it, the Holy Spirit has his stuff down. Yes. So we are going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I, I'm going to read, uh, if I can just read kind of an introduction, sure. just real quick. And it's what we're going to talk about is attracting the anointing, attracting the anointing. And in 1 John 2.20, the scripture says, but you have received 
an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. One of the things that the Lord laid on my heart today that I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork of what we're going to talk about, we are people of grace. We absolutely believe that everything that was necessary and needful for us to have a relationship with God, whether it's healing, salvation, prosperity of every every kind, or being used under the anointing of the Holy Spirit came because of what Christ did. Mm -hmm. And this is something, when I was thinking about this today, it's one thing to have something inside, but the challenge for all of us is getting what's on the inside outside. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear a few things tonight that if you don't, uh, if you don't hear that and hear everything we say through that, you're going to think, oh, they're getting into work. So they're getting it. No, we're not. But to think that just the power of agreement, and this is where the Holy Spirit had me. We think of agreeing with one another, Mm -hmm. husbands, wives, so on and so forth. But what about us agreeing with the new nature that's Mm -hmm. within us? You know, we would all agree that there's power in agreement. We talked about it just a moment ago. But what about agreeing with that new nature and who you are inside? You have the anointing inside Mm -hmm. of you as a believer. That's what we just read to you. But it's one thing to have it inside, something totally different to get it on the outside and manifest in your life. You know, we say all the time, we're not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed trying to get sick. Okay, well, if I'm the healed, how come my body's still sick? Well, the challenge is agreeing with what's on the inside and manifesting that on the outside. So, And, uh, you know, so many times... um, Well, not too long ago, I wrote a little piece of paper and I put it on your mirror and it said, you are chosen, appointed, and anointed to do this. Yes. And every time I listen to the programs, I think about those three words. You know, there's there's an ease when there is an anointing involved in in something. And we see this a lot, you know, even when we listen to a song. You know, you could right away tell an individual that is singing uh, that has that anointing of the Holy Spirit in their lives. It goes beyond just singing a beautiful melody or a a beautiful song. It just does something to your heart. It penetrates your inner being, you know, just listening to that because they're ministering. They're not only just singing. I remember before you and I ever met, I, right after I came to the Lord, when I was about 17 or 18 years old, I did this, that I bought a music tape. It was a gospel tape. I brought it home. I listened to it and I took it back to the store and the person looked at me (laughs) and said, why why are you returning it? And I looked at them and I said, because it's not anointed. (laughs) And they looked at me like I might as well have been speaking a foreign language. They gave me my money back, but it just wasn't doing it for me. (laughs) But, uh, you know, the the anointing is something where you preachers understand this. It is a terrible thing to preach when you don't sense the anointing. But, oh, boy, when the presence of the Lord is manifesting through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the word anointing literally means smeared from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you preach or you sing or you pray or you minister or you speak in any form or way or think under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's a divine enablement yes. that supersedes our own human ability. ability. That's so good. Yeah, it's where we leave off and God begins. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're really looking for attracting the anointing. What can we do? Oh, because, because we all want it. We all do. Yes. Every one of us. We want to be effective. I don't know of anybody who starts out in business or life and says, I just want to be a failure. Mm. Every one of us, you said the word effect. And that is what the anointing does. Absolutely. It makes us effective. Yes. And, and this, uh, this teaching tonight came from me to me from the book of Exodus in Exodus 30, 22, mm-hmm. God is giving Moses, uh, an instruction. He's giving him some instructions and some call it a recipe for the anointing. Mm. This was, uh, you know, a mixture of five ingredients that were used to anoint and to smear, like you said, Mm -hmm. over priests and kings. And, um, you know, tonight I wanted to talk about 
um, you know, it was good that you touched on the fact that because of Jesus, now that anointing is available to us. And, you know, and, and it's Jesus. us. And it's us accessing it. Very good. Wow, that's so good. Yes. So, you know, um, the first uh, character characteristic that I wanted to touch on that, you know, it's so uh, so important to have in our lives, amen, because I believe that it's one of the first things that attracts the anointing mm -hmm. of God is having a, a spirit of meekness. Yes. And submission. Yes. You know, um meekness and submission uh does well someone said meekness does not mean weakness yeah it literally means power under, under control. control absolutely yeah. absolutely and how many parents exercise that with their children sometimes <laughs> <laughs> i got the power to put you out but i'm not going to <laughs> yes. uh, and so and and really submission is just rendering everything that you do uh, you know, to God, Yes. you know, and uh, we see this a lot in Moses's life. And, uh, you know, in Numbers 12, 3, uh, it says that um, Mo Moses had was the meekest men mm -hmm. uh, that had come to be. And we, you know, I asked myself, what, how did he do this? How did this happen? That God would say, you know, here, this is a meek man. Yes. Well, we find that he was his he was separated from the life that he grew up in. Yes. The, the life of luxury and and he finds himself tending to sheep in a desert. Not a very glamorous uh, place to be. <laughs> oh, and in, you know, and in the and so in the day that we're living in, that we want everything in, instant. Instant. In, Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, we're saying, oh, you know, if something doesn't happen within the time frame that we think it should, we immediately discard it and say, well, God, you know, must have changed his mind. Did I really, we even question him sometimes. Does he really, did he really mean what he said to me? Did I hear wrong? Um, and, you know, submission to me is not only submitting to what you know what God wants to do in your life, but it's also submitting to the process. Yes. And God does not move according to our timetable, even mm -hmm. though we can delay things. Right. And that's a whole other subject. But it's it's just, you know, when you brought this up, I, I was thinking of Jesus. Nevertheless, not my will, mm -hmm. but thy will be done. Yes. What was he doing? He was submitting not to his own desires or his own will, but to the will of the Father. Yes. It's really until our self-will is gone. And some of us, it takes 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Some of us, it takes 40 days. Others, it takes 40 years mm -hmm. to get us to the place right. where we're prepared for that anointing uh -huh. to flow. I mean, you think about Moses. He spent 40 years calling on God and waiting on God. Yeah. You know. And, and God did what he did at the right time. Yes. The word says that God sends a burning bush. Yep. And, and here Moses... Uh, you know, he t he takes his shoes off yeah. in reverence. You know, he realizes the, the standing on holy ground, the presence of God, and the importance. And uh, and God tells him at that point is where God gives him an instruction, and he says, mm -hmm. "Go to Pharaoh." And he, I bet he didn't think that's what God was going to say. <laughs> well, we, I'm so honored to have this time with you. Mm -hmm. No. Well, we hear that, you know, how many excuses he brought he brought before the Lord, you know, and um, trying to really change God's mind. But, you know, he, he, he goes ahead and he, you know, he obeys God. And really, it's, submission is all about obedience. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, in our lives, it might not going, be going before a pharaoh. It might not be a big thing like that. It might be the smallest of things yeah. where God is just wanting for us to obey and to, you know, surrender to him our will. Like Abraham. Yes. It was never God's intention for mm -hmm. him to kill his son. He just wanted to see if he was willing to obey. Yeah. And, and, you know, something we also hear of Jesus' mother. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, you know, came to the feast and told them, you know, to fill the jugs with water. Yeah. And, you know, and... The didn't make sense. Didn't make sense to the people around. But they, she looked at them and she said, 
Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Boy, you and talk it's, about that's a mission right there. It's as simple as that. And it's as simple as Whatever that. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Yes. And then that is, the, that is at the place that we first discover that, you know, that we're stepping into an anointed life. Yes. When we are willing to submit and, and just lay it down before him. Amen. You know, someone said years ago, and when you really are honest, it seems like our focus is not on the right thing. It's not about your ability, but it's about your availability. Yes. And what does that mean? Not my will, but mm -hmm. your will be done. Whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. I remember somebody told me in Bible college, and they said it publicly, that we're all called to be living sacrifices. Mm -hmm. But the problem with a living sacrifice is it continually keeps crawling off of the altar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we were just dead, literally dead, we wouldn't have an opinion about anything. Right. Well, in many regards, that's the way God wants us to be, yes. to his will. Right. Not my will, not my opinion, not my yeah. desires, but what you want, yeah. what you desire for my life. And that's a place of submission and surrender. surrender yes. Yeah. Yes. And then the second characteristic that I, I came across here that... Um, I believe that, you know, attracts the anointing of God into our, uh, to our lives is that he calls us to uprightness. Yes. And that is a stand, you know, uh, taking a stand of truth. Uh, you know, it's a perfect um, scenario the day that we're living in. You know, Joshua 1, 8 says, choose you this day mm. who you will serve and i think today more than ever as believers as people you know of faith we are being you know challenged to take a stand to, to yep, you know to compromise right yes uh, when you take a stand you know you are choosing so many times um against what the world is dictating right you know what you know there's going to be people that you know are going to be upset at you but um you know what about if we stand on the basis of jesus and uh, and of the blood right uh we stand on what his promises say amen you know regardless of whatever it is that we might be facing you know he, you know if you have today a situation where you have a loved one that is not living for God you know uh, the promises that are in God's word are that as for me as for you and your house you know you will serve the Lord that's and, God's perspective on it right right and and no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper you know um so it, the challenge a lot of times is just simply again like we said at the beginning of the program we have this anointing most people know what God's will is on the majority of subjects. Right. It's not God's will for you to be sick. It's not God's will for your family to be lost. Okay, you know God's perspective on it. Right. Now, the challenging part is to walk in agreement yes. with that. It's so incredibly important that you line up your thinking, your speaking, all of those types of things with what you know God's will is. Mm -hmm. So it's you got to take a stand, like you yes. said. I don't care how it looks. You know, sometimes we think about spiritual warfare dealing with people when we share our testimony or we share our faith and people just come against us. Mm -hmm. But the majority of warfare is mental. It's it's mm -hmm. a perspective that you have to you have to maintain and to keep and to say no, I don't care how it looks. My kids are going to be saved. My family is going to make it to heaven. I'm not going to let go of that promise because it's a promise from God to me. And, and you know, in the day that we're living in, you know, so many people are facing illnesses. And, you know, and it's standing again, taking a stand on whose report are you going to believe? Oh, you very know, good. You know, um, we, we honor doctors, but really the Lord is the one who has the last word. Amen. Amen. And he says, with long life will he satisfy That's us. That's what his word says. Yes. So uh, it's taking the word of God and taking a stand and not fluctuating, you understand me, that one day, oh, yes, I know what the word says, but. It's yes. Like so many times you have said, that but always wants to get in, in the, the way. way. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, uh, when talking about Moses, he had to take a stand. 
He had to leave Egypt yeah. in order to uh, to say yes to God. And, and you stop and think, and it, it doesn't make any sense. You're leaving a place that, you know, there was a future uh, of maybe of him being the next pharaoh, and, and he, he gave all that up. And said yes to the Lord, Amen. Yeah, that you bring up a very good point. God does not always make sense. Mm -hmm. Case in point: Adam and Eve, they fall, they disobey God. Why did the Lord wait nearly two thousand years to send Jesus? Mm -hmm. I'd have sent him the next minute or the next day. <laughs> Because it wasn't his perfect time. Galatians 4.4, 4, when the fullness of time had come. That's when he sent forth his son. So it, submission is such a thorough uh, word that when we, and I don't think it's a one-time decision. Mm -hmm. It's a constant whenever we're challenged to not surrender or submit mm -hmm. or to keep our eyes on Jesus it's a it's it's a progressive word. It's a continual word. It's not a one time decision. It's a continual day by day, moment by moment, mm -hmm. experience by experience decision that we make. Mm -hmm. You know, Ephesians says in four places in the book of Ephesians we hear we 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 hear that God says stand, mm -hmm. and he even he goes on to say even when you've done all that you can. Still, still stand. still stand. But wait a minute, I'm doing what I was doing back before I did everything you told me to do. I still got to keep doing the same thing. Yes. Yeah, yep. got to keep doing the same yes. thing. And, and, and you know, so <laughs> many times we, you know, can we say no when God says no? <laughs> you know, right. Even when you think about the, the um, Joshua and the armies of Israel, they had to come to the place of submission to walk around those walls for six days, and on the seventh they walked around seven times, and then they blew the shofar and waited to see if God was going to do what he said he was going to do. So it's all throughout the scripture. You know, how did they get the walls to come down? They surrendered to God. Yes. How did they see the presence and the power of God manifest in their life? You think back with with. Uh, Catherine Kuhlman, man walks up to her and says, Miss Kuhlman, how much did this anointing cost you? And she turned and smiled and said, simply everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to remember, when we, st you know, we all think it's a great idea to walk in agreement with God. But do we really believe it? Because in order for God to have a relationship with us, he gave everything. Yes. So what do you think it's going to take for for us in order to enjoy mm -hmm. what he's already provided? Yes. It's going to cost us everything. Yes. Now, I'm not saying for you to go to heaven, but I'm saying for us to experience. Here on earth. Yeah. The anointing of God, the blessing of the Lord to have an open heaven to where you clearly hear God speaking to you and that you, you know, when you look at men like David, there was a reason God used them. Mm -hmm. They were surrendered to him. Mm -hmm. They weren't perfect. They made mistakes. Don't don't get it this twisted. But their heart was surrendered. Mm -hmm. You know, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When they mm -hmm. failed, they got back up and they got back in the race. Yes. You know, so it's uh, mm -hmm. and I think what we're talking mm -hmm. about tonight, just to be fair, big learning curve. We're going to continue to surrender, continue to submit, yes. continue to yield, continue to be broken, continue to be obedient mm -hmm. for the rest of our life. Yes. Because after God finishes telling you what he's told you and you do what he's told you to do, guess what? There's always going to be something different. Mm -hmm. But this, where you're at, is to prepare you for where you're going. Absolutely. You know, we were talking about people earlier being faithful with their finances. The time to be faithful with your finances is not when, you know, you got a Fortune 500 company. And time to do it is right now. Mm -hmm. It'll never get any easier than it gets right now. You know, so it's 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 starting where you're at. Mm -hmm. Well, if I had a better this or I had a better, no, 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 no. Start where you're at. No matter, even if you're in the middle of a mess right now, 
Come on, start where you're at. Mm -hmm. You can get up and you can get moving and God can turn your mess into a blessing. Amen. He can. His favor and his anointing will start flowing in your direction when you Amen. obey him. When you obey him. Yes. Amen. Just, you know, he all he wants us to do is what he tells us to do. Yes. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, moving on to the third characteristic that I have um, that I believe will attract, attract the anointing in God of God in our lives is humility. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Jesus showed us uh, and became the greatest example of humility. Um, when we saw him uh, washed his disciples' feet here, you know, these were fishermen that were coming in dirty. <laughs> and here Jesus, the King you of know, Kings. he skirted himself with, you know, Son of God, with a towel, and he just washed their feet. And, you know, um, God teaches us the importance in that parable of serving people. You know, where there is no humility, there's no anointing. Yes. Because well, uh, that, that's good. Say that again. Where there is no humility, there is no anointing. Yeah. Now you, know? you can have it inside of you, but you'll never experience it. Amen. Yeah. It's like an egg. Oh yeah, the yolk, the egg whites in here, but you'll not enjoy it until you crack mm -hmm. that shell yeah. and allow what's on the inside to come out. And, and it's hard to be humble. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I've heard people say, I'm proud to be humble. <laughs> uh, but really, you, because humility uh, requires you to serve without worrying about who's going to get the credit. Oh, you know I mean? man, that is so good. <laughs> One so, of my favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan, had on his desk, it's incredible how much can be get accomplished when no one cares who yeah. gets the credit. So, so what is humility? One facet is... I don't care whether I get the credit or right. not. We're told in the word, whatever we do, do it heartily as unto the Lord mm -hmm. and not unto man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's challenging yeah. because there's a part of us that we want recognition. Oh, yes. You know, we, we want that, that acknowledgement. We want that attaboy. We want that mm -hmm. credit, you know. And as believers, we're called to give Nothing wrong with people heaping compliments on you, but it's what you do with them yeah. after the fact. You got to just say to God, "Be all the glory." And and it becomes more difficult as God blesses you. It tends to be more challenging. Very yeah. true. But you know, I I love what David used to say. He says, "I would rather be a doorkeeper Shoo. in the house of the Lord than to dwell in, in the, the tents of the wicked." Yep, yep. There is just, um, you know. His heart really was not to rule over Israel. Mm -hmm. His heart was just to be faithful wherever God put him. Yeah. And man, that can relieve a lot of stress off people. Mm -hmm. You know what? People can get stressful over places they think God's going to take them. Why not be focused on where God has you? Yes. You know, it's it's. Uh, I think it's just something that each and every one of us work on learning how to do. Mm -hmm. You know, here God gives you a big vision, a big dream. How's it going to happen? Humility, mm -hmm. submission, yeah. obedience, just doing. Listen, God does not hold you accountable for what you're supposed to do tomorrow. Right. All he does is give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to be faithful and obedient over what he's given us to do yes. today. Yeah. And the more humility we have, the more anointing God will pour on, pour on our lives. I mean, well, he, that's very good. You know, it becomes, we become useful vessels, right? 100%. You know, I, I always think of a vessel, you know, it's pretty, but it's not, if it's not useful, what's the beauty of it? What's, what's the purpose of it? I, so, I've always thought of people that have all of these antique cars and mm -hmm. they have them in, in glass enclosures. Mm -hmm. And listen, these are people that have quite a bit of money. And I guess... To them, it'd be like you and I collecting a pen or something. But the intention of a car is to enjoy, yes, but also to transport, yes. to get you from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people kind of, they view the anointing or the treasure of God that lives within us in that same way. You know, 
use it. God's put it within us mm -hmm. to use. Yes. You look at Mark 16. You shall lay hands on the sick mm -hmm. and they shall recover. Mm -hmm. Well, that anointing to see people raise up and to be healed is in you. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you used it? And I'm not saying that to condemn anybody, but when you start thinking about, you know, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. Well, you ever stop and think, Jesus may be saying the same thing. What is Jesus doing? Because Jesus is in us. Mm -hmm. And the only hindrance to Jesus is not the devil, because Jesus made a show of him openly. It's us not releasing what's on the inside, outside. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. It's just a, an encouragement to all of us. Yes. Come on, don't let don't keep the tiger or the lion on the leash. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let him go about. Let him do what he desires to do. Mm -hmm. Let God be God, not only in your life, but in the lives of others through you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and then there's the uh, the fourth characteristic mm -hmm. that I think goes along with humility, and it's um, inner cleansing. Mm -hmm. uh, every now and then. We need to go to the, before the, the Lord, before the cross, uh, like David did. He said, search me, O God, and see if there's any wicked thing in me. Yep. And, uh, Try me and know my thoughts. Yes. Uh, you know, th so many times going before God and being honest and, and asking him, is there, a, or even questioning ourselves, is, is there anything that's preventing from God, like you said, using me for the purpose that he it created me for yes. the intention that he had for yeah. my life, you know. Um, and we're talking specifically about your soul, your mind, yes. your will, your emotions. Yes. That's where you you experience everything through that dimension. Yes. You experience the peace of God that mm -hmm. comes from your spirit in through your soul. But those are areas that people get hung up on sometimes. Unforgiveness dwells in your soul. Yes. Bitterness. Mm -hmm finds a place to be rooted in, in, in our soul. Right. Peace, when perfect peace have all they whose mind or thoughts are stayed upon the Lord. So every once in a while, you need to check your soul. Yes, you need and, and find out what you're feeding your, yourself. Like Very you said, good. You said uh, your mind is the breathing ground for a lot of thoughts sometimes that don't line up with the word of God. Yes. You know, it, it, the word says, he has good thoughts for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 100%. says the, that, that he knows the thoughts that he, ha he has for you. Thoughts of good and not evil to give you a, a future and an expected end. Amen. What is that? Are you dwelling in that expected end that oh, that's God good. has for yeah. you? Or are you dwelling on just uh, whether it's fear, um, you know, uh, gloom and doom, just uh, knowing that you know, that we, you would have a heart that would cry out to God, you know, that would, uh, would attract the anointing Amen. To, to come in. Yeah. I Amen. read this scripture this week where Job said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. Yes. Where did he fear it? He feared yes. it in his soul and mm -hmm. his thoughts. He was concerned. I wonder one day if I'm going to lose all of this. Mm -hmm. I wonder one day if I'm going to lose my... And he said, the thing that I had already previously feared the most, it's come upon me. Mm -hmm. So it ties exactly in with what... So it's bringing into check the way we think, what we what we entertain in the dining room of our minds, oh. you know, and in the... And, in our lives. As a man thinketh in his heart, yes. so is he. Yes, because... Um, I, I had a saying here. Used to that call I'm, years ago, stinking thinking. thinking yes. <laughs> you got to get rid of stinking thinking. He says you either have a living faith or a dying faith. Okay. You know, so really the power of death and life. In our tongue. Yeah, and out of the abundance of your heart, heart your mouth speaks. So are we speaking life or are we speaking death? And we determine the fruit that will come out of our mouth. Yes. We determine whether we're gonna extract and enjoy and experience the anointing that God has put within us, yes. or we will be the ones who determine and decide whether or not we don't. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The choice is up to us. And as long as we're blaming the devil, as long as we're blaming our past, and as mm-hmm. long as we're blaming our education, as long as all of those things, the end of the story is that the enemy's going to get exactly what he wants. You're going to be, and I'm going to be, ineffective and not be people that produce fruit. Mm-hmm. And so it's personal accountability saying, you know what? I can't change what has happened, right. but I can change what's, what is happening mm-hmm. and what's going to happen. I can change my attitude, my perspective, my vision. I can line my thoughts up with what God says. Right. And uh, I can believe that I am somebody. Why? Mm-hmm. Because God has chosen us. Yes. We have the treasure in an earthen vessel. And, and God doesn't create, God create no junk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably still have that little sign, <laughs> little boy like this, God don't make no, no junk. junk. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the truth. Amen. He does not make people Amen. that are less than. He does. That's why when you start, and don't get me started on this, but when you start, whether you watch the news or whether, what, whatever, you know, the enemy has done very well in putting people in categories. Mm-hmm. Listen, in Christ, there's only one culture. There's only one color. There's mm-hmm. only one language. There's only one people. There's only two classes of people in the world. Mm-hmm. Are you saved? Are you not saved? That's it. Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? Are you going to spend eternity with God or are you going to spend eternity away from God? You know, we get so, and that's one of the things that the enemy is using, even in the church, very divisive. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to a church, it's not so much about Jesus, but what a political affiliation are you with or what this, what that. Listen, are we brothers and sisters in the Mm -hmm. Lord? Let's start there. Amen. Let's begin there. Amen. Amen. So, I like that song that says, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, that's good. You know? So tonight we want you to know that God's not done with you. He's got greater things. If you're still alive, if you're breathing, yes. it's this breath that you're breathing tonight. Amen? Sometimes it gets hard. It gets yes. challenging. Mm-hmm. It's, it's difficult. But, uh, you know, I had mentioned this, I think it was today, you know, We may not be able to look at yesterday and see much of a difference, Mm -hmm. but look back when we first gave our heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of the things that God has done. He's accomplished in and through us. Think of the growth that you've made, the Mm -hmm. changes that you've been able to make, the things that God has done. It's less about you and it's more about him. Mm -hmm. So the enemy, he's very good at discouraging people and making you think you're not moving forward. But as you look back, there's been changes, there's been growth, Mm -hmm. and there's been more of you allowing that anointing that you've been uh, Mm -hmm. so graciously given inside of you to move in your heart, Mm -hmm. move in your life. You know, maybe you don't feel like you're the most patient person, but go back when you were younger. Come on. Sometimes you got to, David encouraged himself in the Lord, and I believe it's okay for us to do the Absolutely. same thing. Yes. You got to look at where God has brought you. Uh, some would say, well, you know, he's not finished with me yet. And uh, we understand what that person means, but look at what he's done already. Mm-hmm. Look what we've allowed him to. Look what he's changed in our hearts and in our minds. Mm-hmm. And and the last characteristic that I, w- I wanted to uh, bring across was um, the inner filling of the Holy yes. Spirit. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit feeds us. The Holy Spirit, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was um, used this anointing that I, w- I mentioned about in, um, in Exodus 20, uh, 30, 20, 22, and 24. Mm-hmm. It, it was, uh, you know, an anointing that, you know, also... Uh, required one of the ingredients was oil and this you know we hear of oil being used as a symbol of the holy spirit and that oil in in ancient days was used to um you know to comfort those that maybe had traveled for a long distance yeah you know uh it was used to bring we see it in the story of the samaritan how he used oil and wine yes. to heal the wounds of that man so that brings had been healing. healing yes so um you know the anointing of of, of god 
heal the Holy Spirit heals our minds and heals our relationships. Yes. And and so it's very important to you know to ask that that daily God would would refresh us with fresh anointing yes. in our lives. You know, David said in Psalm 92, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You know, when I hear that word fresh oil, I think of the actual oil that I use sometimes for cooking. Right. That if I use it more than once, it starts to smell a little funny. Yeah, yeah. And, and it starts to change in color. So how important is it that every day we come before the Lord and ask Him for a fresh anointing. Man, if you want fresh oil for your fried chicken, come on. <laughs> You're better and more valuable than fried chicken. Yes. I mean, every day, Lord, give mm -hmm. me fresh oil, yes. fresh experience, yes. fresh renewing yes. in my mind, my heart, yes. my thoughts, every aspect of my life. I think it's because David realized that he couldn't fight, you know, his present battles with the with the anointing of the of the previous day. You know, every single day he had a different battle, he had a different and it's no different than us. We are being faced with different challenges, mm, not yep. only as the years come by, but even as the days come by, Very we true. see that every day there's a different challenge. I think about computers. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, getting ready to, uh, to start training on a new computer system that my workplace is implementing. And I'm thinking, I'm already asking the Holy Spirit to anoint me and help me because I'm hearing from other coworkers how difficult and challenging this new program is. So, you know, it's the same way when we, we know, as we live our life, we need that fresh anointing from God, Amen. you know, uh, and there's nothing that can take the place of the, of, of the like I said, of the fresh anointing. Uh, you know, uh, people think that money and houses and cars can, you know, can bring peace and joy, but truly it is the presence of God and that anointing. Uh, in our in our lives that makes the difference. The word says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke, right? So, uh, and the interesting thing is, if it was good enough for Jesus to say, "Give me this day my daily bread," mm -hmm. it ought to be good enough for us. Yes, yes. And that was His prayer for you and I yes. that we would have that heart, mm -hmm. that we we would have we would have that desire to say, "God, today." You know, we get so caught up into tomorrow, next week, next mm -hmm. month, the next trial, the next event. What about right now, Lord? Yes. Get right now. You know, we, we look at Friday and it's getting late in the day and we thought oh, the day is over. The day's not over. It's not over until you lay down and go to sleep. Lord, between now and the time I go to sleep, refresh me, strengthen me, mm -hmm. open my heart, yes. clarify some things, mm -hmm. help my thoughts to be on you, help me to be more submissive, me, more yielded. And, and submission is not an ugly word. It's a beautiful word. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just construed oftentimes in a very terrible light. But it was Jesus saying, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful, it's a, it's a word of surrender that we allow ourselves to, and it's something that God can't do for us, we have to do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. All of these things that we've talked about, the pastor can't do it for you, mm -hmm. we can't do it for you, you, we have to do it for ourselves. And so we want to encourage you tonight, yes. wherever you're at, whatever you're dealing with, have don't run your race according to what you see by other people. Run your race, stay in your lane, keep your eyes on Jesus, and allow the things that we talked about tonight to be your heart's cry. Lord, thank you that you've placed the anointing of the Holy Spirit inside yes. of me. Thank you that everything that you've gifted me with, you've enabled me with, is more than enough mm -hmm. to do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that all of these things that you've given to me are mine simply because you are love me. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We thank you. We're grateful for your faithfulness, and we honor you tonight because you have put the anointing of the Holy Spirit in every single 
believer. We have received an unction from the Holy One, a divine smearing, a divine enablement that is able to supersede and begin where our strengths end. And so we just pray tonight for those that may be going through some issues physically, spiritually, emotionally, with their family, financially, whatever the ask, whatever the, the, the area or the uh, aspect of the trial may be, we ask you that you'd encourage your people. We thank you for it. We bless you for it. And Holy Spirit, lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's Aidas and I's desire that you have a great rest of your evening, a blessed weekend. And before we go, we do want to thank you for being with us. At the end of the program, would you consider going into the description section? And there you're going to find some very simple and safe ways to give back and to sow into the ministry of Faith is Victory Fellowship. We are a ministry that absolutely are dedicated to teaching and to preaching and ministering the good news of a life without fear. And so we encourage you to do that. And we know, we believe that God will bless you as a result. Well, our time is up, but we do have enough time to tell you that we love you. God loves you. And as always, never, ever forget, He, he is, is faithful. faithful. God bless you.